Hello YouTube, welcome back to RV Daydream. Bodega Cooler, this is the third, I believe, cooler that we've done with them. This one is a little bit different in the way that it's formed to fit inside the vehicle. And I'm gonna tell you, it's really tall, but it's also really big. So let's go to the intro, come back and talk about this thing. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So we've done Bodega Cooler, I don't know how many times now. Like I said, I think this is the third one. The last one that we did was a big 80 liter and it was a dual zone. It, it had two doors on it and one you could set up as a freezer, one you could set up as a fridge or one, you know, vice versa. You could do either or, um, but it was uh, a longer one. It was a shorter one. It was a wider one, uh, but it had basically the same components that this one operates with and that is it has a real compressor these things have real compressors in them and they run really quiet they're very efficient so you can power this of course three different ways um, you can power this off of a solar panel you know with some sort of a, uh, a battery bank you can plug this into the wall of your home or you can plug it into your power port inside your vehicle. So we'll check this thing out, just plugged into the uh, garage here. Um, as you can see, pretty substantial in its size, but it is, you know, it's shock proof. Um, you can set it up like at a 45 degree slope. Uh, it, it's like a, a cooler, but you can't leave this outdoors. It's, it's not something that you just throw it out in the rain and, and hope that it works like your old Coleman style cooler. It just doesn't work that way. But Bodega makes some really nice products. Uh, like I said, this is the third one that we've had. And this one is kind of like the companion of that 80 liter. So what is this one? This one is the 65 liter. So that comes out to like 68 quarts. 68 quarts, what's that mean? You know, in, in us normal people's language. Uh, if we were to say, partake in canned beverages, <laughs> you can put 90 in here, 90. 90 will fit in here, 90 cans, 90 12 ounce cans will fit inside here. Let's get this out. Now, I wanna tell you though, when you receive this, if for some reason they didn't follow the big arrows, which say up, um, you wanna set this thing up and just play it safe. Don't rush it, give it 24 hours. Let it set upright for a full 24 hours before you plug it in. Because if this thing is laying on its side or on its back or upside down or whatever, uh, that oil that's inside the compressor, cause it is a real compressor, that'll be somewhere other than the compressor when you start it up and it'll burn it up. So once it's out of the box, it looks a little bit more impressive when it comes to the size. Uh, and what I mean is, I'll tell you what, that box with that extra packaging that they have in it uh, really made it seem like it was almost going to be unwieldy as far as its height. But now that it's out of the box, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable with this. So what are the dimensions on this exactly? 23 inches on the tight. Now that, that's gonna be something that you have to be concerned with if you have like a tonneau cover or something on the back of your truck. Like we had a flush mount tonneau cover on the back of our F-350. And I know that the bed rails uh, on that weren't very tall. Uh, we couldn't fit a generator that was over 19 inches under that low profile flush mount roll back style tonneau cover. Now, a normal tonneau cover, like I have on this old uh, Winter Beater F-150 that's in the garage, uh, that sets up on the bed rails. That one, there's no problem with that. Uh, but 23 inches in height, and as far as from the, uh, the length from corner to the uh, other corner there, you're looking at 27.2 inches. Of course, that's the longest dimensions. And it's 16 inches from front to back, or as you're standing in it to open the door, it's, it's let's just say 16 inches. And again, this is a 68, 69 quart, um, which is 65 liters. And it, that's substantial. It's very substantial, but it is a one zone. This is just one zone. You don't have, um, you know, different sides, you know, one refrigerator, one freezer. 
not a big deal because usually um, you're not trying to necessarily freeze everything. Uh, you, you know, whenever you go camping, you put ice in a cooler and you put your frozen stuff in there. And even in the front, it says if the food needs to be frozen, it should be stored inside this product for at least 20 hours for the best effect. So place the food in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours before placing in this product. And what they're saying is don't go to the grocery store and buy yourself hot products or products that need to be frozen and expect this to, to do the job. This is to maintain what you have. Now, over a long period of time, it will freeze. So you can't put your fruits and vegetable in here and set it on its lowest setting, which is minus four degrees Fahrenheit um, and expect this thing not to freeze things because it will. But in an eco mode, this thing will run at, you know, 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which that's that's pretty good. That's, you know, just normal cooling speed. It reduces power consumption and it's going to, you know, 32. That's that's good. That's that's really good. That's better than most refrigerators. So let's take a look at what it has as far as features. Basic standard stuff, first of all. Inches on this side, centimeters on this side. What's that for? Well, at the work site, maybe you're measuring stuff. This is something that has been around for a long time. People measuring fish um, whenever they're trying to, you know, see if they're keepers. So, yeah, you can put this in the back of your boat, go out fishing. And then if you've got a fish that you just don't know the size, you've got a build-in already there. Of course, you have some build-in cup holders up top. That makes it nice when this is in between you when you're sitting outside at a campsite. Uh, you've got a place to put your, your cups until you need another drink. Then, of course, you've got to lift it up. Um, it's got a nice positive latch to keep this closed. A little chain to keep it from overextending. There is a drain in the bottom. And it is a step. Let me show you here. You kind of have a step here and the compressor sits on this side and then of course like i said there's a drain plug down there and then this is your plugs that they give you but it's very plentiful i mean that's that's very deep that is very nice the other thing that it has obviously you got your handle and that handle is going to allow you to do what you need to do because it's got wheels on the other side so as far as that's concerned It'll wheel it around to where you need to not have to pick it up. So let's see inside here. So here you have your power port. This plugs into the side. I like that they give you a 90 degree uh, to keep you, you know, to where the cord's not coming out and you need to put it in an area that's kind of tight. This keeps it to where it can get up nice and close. And then of course that same 90 degree here, but in this case it has a power brick that converts it over. For household current and then you have your manual also make sure you read through the manual there's a lot of good information in there there's a handle here to help you lift it if you need but this right here gives you just a little bit of a option for storage of the plug so let's see if this brick will fit in there yeah the brick will not fit so it's just for the power port that'll go in there and if we go back around the front We'll get you a little bit closer to this display so we can take a look at that. So with this plugged in, you can see um, the display here. They're showing a few things. 14.4, sorry, 14.5 volt max. You got 48 degrees is what this is set at. Of course, to lower that stuff, minus four. So it's 48 degrees inside there. And we can change it to whatever we want. So let's say we want it at 10 degrees. Um, the other thing that you can do with these settings is you can change it to where you have your low cutoff voltage. All that's discussed in the manual. What that does is make it to where your vehicle could potentially drop a little bit lower in voltage as far as the battery is concerned before it shuts off. I like to set it on a little bit of the higher side of things because I don't want my car battery or my RV battery or anything like that to drop down to let's say 11 volts or even lower than that let's say 10.2 volts and then shut off or have this thing shut off and quit drawing from it. Um, it you know that that could take the battery and make it to where you have a problem with it but 
as far as the uh, nicety of them being able to give you the option to do that, that makes it to where you might be able to, you know, save yourself from losing all your food, but also ruining a battery doing so. It's really, really quiet running, so don't be concerned about noise. Um, that's not a big deal at all. Now, as far as this going through the beach and that, it will handle it. Just make sure you don't get sand up in there real heavy. Um, you're, at that point, you're just basically dragging a sled behind you. I mean, the wheels are pretty substantial uh, for on concrete and hard moves, but when you get in sand, that's a whole nother story. The best thing about this by far is the app. The app will allow you to make all these modifications without going through and pushing buttons and trying to figure out this way. We'll go ahead and look at the app here real quick. That's it. You, you've got the current temperature. You can set it with that slider to what temperature you want it to be at. You can lock it so that nobody can fool with the display, your kids or anything like that, pushing the display and changing the temperature by accident. That could be horrible. And then, of course, um, there's a button for more features, and one of those things in the more feature section is going to be Celsius or Fahrenheit, your mode if you want to be on Eco or Max, and then your battery protect, high, medium, or low. Again, those settings are going to determine on how far you're going to drain your battery before you have an issue. So Bodega Cooler has been on our radar for some time now. Again, this is, like I said, the third one that we've reviewed from them. and. I'm really impressed with the quality that they put out. These are substantial pieces that you want to use as a family when you go RVing, when you go camping, especially tent camping or tailgating or boating. And they do a good job at putting something out that doesn't break the bank. I know that there's some other brands that are out there that are well into the $800 to $1,000 range that don't even have the same capacity. But the funny thing is, is a lot of them are running the same components, the same compressor. So uh, take a look at them. The links are going to be down in the description. And if you uh, like what you see, uh, click that link. It'll take you right to this product. And I appreciate it. And as always, guys, we hope to see you out there. Bye.